Hey, how's it going, everyone? So what am I working on now? I got a 2014 Hyundai Sonata. Uh, it's the 2.4 liter. And the customer's complaint is they got a noise in the front. Somebody told them it needs axles. And they also have an airbag light on. It's not on now, but they have an airbag light on and a tire pressure light. So I'm doing a system scan on this thing right now. I want to see what comes up. And we're going to take it for a road test. I want to see if I hear any noises that they're complaining about to see if I can say, yeah, it's going to be axles or whatever before I just bother putting it on the lift. Um, but yeah, let's see what this scan comes up with. So right here, shut that light off. SRS 1 and 2. I don't know why it has a 1 and 2 or if it's passengers. passenger is 2. Probably. Okay. Well, TPMS might be its own sensor here. Right, because we have training control, engine control, IMMO, I don't know what that is, code, I'm not quite sure, but auto control module, instrument cluster, electronic power steering, WCS, I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. I don't remember acronyms, so let's just see. Let's do a report. Okay, okay. We're going to save the report. So then this way, I can email the report to myself. And send. No network. Going too far away from the building, maybe? So I see that. What's my, what's up with my network? Why? Should be connected. I don't, didn't think I was that far away from the building. Then again, I could be. Let's get closer. All right, let's see. Oh, I got a little bit up there. I see it. So, let's add that and then we'll hit. Send. I know there's a glare on here. But now, let's go, let's just see airbag event one and two. Air, driver airbag resistance too low. Driver airbag resistance too low first and, oh no, just second stage. And it's the same code in both systems. I don't know why there's two separate systems. Oh, there's TPMS. Why didn't that show up? Or did, or did I look at it wrong? It's possible I looked at it wrong. Rear left, rear right, and channel. Okay. Well, I mailed it to myself. So, let's go on a road test and let's see what we come up with. Right? Okay. Yeah, I don't see TPMS there. That's weird. That's very, very strange. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's why. Because of that. So I just didn't scroll up. I just mistook that line for being the bottom of it. Okay. My bad. All right. We're just going to set that off to the side. Let's go for a road test, and let's go over to Mexico. And then this way we can do some parking lot turns and listen for noises. So I'm here in Mexico, and uh, sure enough, yeah, this I hear axle noises. And uh, listen closely. Uh, I got my wheels cut to the right, but listen closely. I'll actually turn out the fan here. This way you don't have to listen to that. You hear that noise? Now we're going to go left. You should be able to hear the left side pretty good. That is a worn CV axle. The, um, the actual uh, roller balls in there and the cage and and uh, whatnot. No, I don't know the technical term. Some people go get hung up on the fact that I don't know certain technical terms, um, what those certain pieces are called. I don't need to know. I don't care. Um, but anyway, those things are worn out, so that's why it's making that noise. I'm not about to rebuild it or anything like that. It's not worth it. Um, way back in the day, in the 80s, yeah, it was worth rebuilding them. Nowadays, it's not. You can buy a, you can buy a new axle reasonably inexpensively 150 bucks 200 bucks 300 bucks if you think about it 300 bucks for the axle let's just say 300 bucks for the axle what are you going to spend for labor for somebody to rebuild your old one 
two hours for one axle, there's 300 bucks right there. Might as well just put a new one in. So, and that's what you're spending on labor plus parts. So just think about it. If you wanted to do it yourself, that's you know, it's up to you. To me, I wouldn't even bother. I'd just get new. But I get I get quality new because you can get cheap new, and they do not last. They are garbage. So just keep it in mind. All right, heading back to the shop now. In case anyone was wondering, this car has 111,500 miles on it. Just throwing it out there. Um, also notice, according to the sticker, it's 4,000 miles overdue for an oil change at 3,500. All right, we're going to check the oil. I'm going to put it up in the air. I'm going to give this thing a full look over. Just wipe the stick off. Let's check it. Like I said, it's overdue for an oil change according to the sticker. And it's at least a quart low. And that oil is pretty dirty. So I'm going to recommend an oil change here because why just add oil when you're that overdue? We have it on the lift. May as well do it. Uh, let's see. That belt doesn't look bad. Uh, let's put it up in the air and let's see what we got. Okay, so underneath here, if you look, you see the boot is coming apart on here. But these axles are noisy, so we already know they're noisy. So they're just worn out. Quick look, somebody's done pads on this thing recently. Tire wear looks okay. Yeah, rear pads got plenty of life, I'm not concerned about them. So yes, it's gonna need a pair of front axles, an oil change, and then we've got to figure out what the airbag situation is. Lots of times when I've run into that resistance issues, it's usually a connector. Usually you've got some kind of moisture in a connector and it built up a little bit of corrosion or something. That's usually what I've found. I've got to see what they want to do. But this video is just going to be about that noise and trying to figure out if it was indeed axles and it is. So, all right. That's going to be it for this one. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys. Have a great day. Keep crunching.